press go. And now we're running the alert protocol. And it's working the same as it has before. Uh, I'll add put on the filters so the simulation looks a little more realistic. We have the thermometers working in the familiar fashion, showing the auto thresholding values. In addition, in 2.5 SE, there's a new trend panel available, which we see now showing the theta, beta, and high beta values as trends. But in addition now, we can use the flash games. To do that, we press the window button. We see that flash player is one of the choices. We press flash player, and the flash player immediately comes up running the bars game. We see a bar for theta, and it says low inhibit, keep small. We see the bar for high beta here, which says high inhibit, also says keep small. We see the enhance bar in the middle. It says keep large and bright. And we see that these bars are moving in an appropriate fashion. Now if we look closely on the lower right hand side of the flash games, we see our five variables. We have the ratio of theta here, the theta threshold, going below and above one. We see here the beta ratio to its threshold, typically larger than one because it's over threshold. Here we have the high beta, um, again, to its threshold. Here we see our points divided by 100. And if we look back at this points window here, we see 56 points compared to the values here, which again, we, that was divided by 100, so everything's working properly. These are the variables which are used by the bars screen. In addition to the right of them, our fifth variable, we see it changing between 0 and 1. You may also notice that it becomes one just before the tones occur. One means that all conditions are being met. When this value becomes one and stays one for a half a second, that's when the tones appear. So let's back out and pick a different flash game. If you go to the file menu here on the upper left and choose file open, these are the available flash games. One of them would be brain cell. And if we choose brain cell, now the brain cell game starts. The way the brain cell game works is it watches variable 5 to see if it's above or below threshold, to see if the condition is being met. And if the condition is being met, then brain cells appear in the jar and begin to move around. So this is an example of a game now which is, which is very engaging visually. The balls start and stop as training conditions are met. If training conditions are met for a certain period of time, more balls are created. And if the conditions are not met over a certain period of time, the balls, one of them will turn red and vanish, like this one just did here. So this is a very simple example of a game. And the, f the event wizard can be set up with any combination of variables, anything at all that allows this value here to become one or zero in an appropriate fashion will control this game. So it's possible to use this game for anything including not just amplitude training but coherence training, variability training, ratio training, asymmetry training, or any kind of protocol at all that could be designed. Now let's again go back to open and choose the brain man game which is another game. The screen comes up we press the button that says start game. Now the brain man game again watches variable number five to see whether the training conditions are being met. And when the conditions are being met, this little Pac-Man moves around the screen and begins to eat the little pearls of wisdom, if you will. The better the training conditions are met, the better he's going to do. So the trainee can just watch the uh, game progress. This is a very interesting game because he always runs the maze differently. He makes decisions about which way to turn whenever he hits a wall. The better the player is doing, the better the decisions he will make and the faster he'll get through the maze. And uh, over a period of training he'll get through the maze several times. When the training conditions aren't met, he turns blue and stops. When they are met, he turns yellow and begins to move. And again, this game can be used 
under the control of any of a wide variety of protocols. Any protocol that controls the variables in the appropriate fashion can control this gain. So again, returning to viewer change settings and going to the settings file, we see alert is there. And as we go down, we find, for example, focus is available. SMR with flash games via event wizard. The other previously available protocols have all been made available. Here's peak alpha coherence with flash games via event wizard. Here's peak two. Sided training, this is a two-channel protocol, left beta and right SMR, also with the flash games. We also have relax, the alpha training with flash games, and sharp, the single component squash. These have all been modified and made available with flash games. Let's just, for example, look at the alpha coherence to see how that one was managed. We'll read in the settings, look at the event wizard, and we see that the event wizard we've used to design ratios. Uh, we're using, for example, theta 1 divided by channel 1 theta threshold plus theta 2 divided by channel 2 theta threshold. So even though we're doing coherence training, we're watching the theta values. Event 2 now is channel 1 alpha coherence divided by coherence threshold. So when we run the bars game, the center bar will actually reflect the coherence relative to the coherence threshold. Event 3 is using the high beta on both channel 1 and 2 again. And uh, if we look at channel 5, we see that we've constructed a complex equation that reflects all of the training variables, including theta and theta threshold, plus the alpha coherence plus the high beta and the high beta threshold. The result being, again, if we change this protocol for simulation, for demonstration, in the next session, go. Now we're looking at alpha coherence. And if we go to the flash player window, we now find, again, all of the control variables are having reasonable values. And as the coherence threshold is met, it's possible to control the flash games using the, um, uh, the protocol. And we're also watching the, um, the theta and high beta values are being used in uh, computing whether or not all the conditions are being met. So, for example, if we return to this screen, we could look at the thermometers. There we see alpha values. It's possible to go look at the theta values. We can raise the theta thresholds, alter them if necessary. We can look at high beta. There's the high beta thresholds. Everything works together. And then by returning to the flash player, we could go, for example, back into any of the games we wanted. For example, Brain Man. And in this case, the Brain Man game is actually being controlled uh, by the coherence value. So now this is actually being used for coherence training.